welcome to episode 13 of my POA podcast, Black Hand and Beyond. We're coming to you live tonight from Enid, Oklahoma at Jackson's Auto Family, Chrysler Jeep Dodge Ram. We're broadcasting live from Studio J. Uh, if you're interested in a Chrysler Dodge Jeep or Ram brand new, I could order one for you and have it drop ship pretty much anywhere in the country. So if you're needing a new vehicle, I know vehicles are hard to come by right now with everything going on in the United States, so just keep that in mind. And that's my plug for tonight. I don't have any uh, sponsors tonight. I didn't really push for any sponsors. I don't have a guest tonight. Um, It's going to be kind of a quick show, Uh, nothing against the subject or to take anything away from the subject. It's still a large subject matter tonight. Uh, But... We've had some large episodes the last couple of weeks, so, you know, going almost two hours with Double Tough, Gold Prince, and last week, uh, the KS's Pony Farm. So tonight, we're going to try to do this in an hour or less. We have about 50-some photos to go through, and uh, tonight's topic is the 1974 Quarter Horse Stallion, Double L's Dickens. And he was owned by Fred and Jan Bruner from Fall Creek, Wisconsin, most of his life. Uh, they bought him as a two-year-old, and uh, they kept him until he died. And he was used primarily as a POA stallion. I do believe they bred uh, a few quarter horse mares over the years to him, people that wanted to breed uh, to him. They did. Uh, he was a beautiful stallion, about 14-3. And we're going to take a look at him right there. So there's a picture of Double L's Dickens in his prime. And he was a own son of Double L's Ray, a corridor stallion who was a son of this stallion in this picture. This is Double L Straw. And Double L Straw was a AAA champion and he was also an AQHA champion. And he was a pretty well known quarter horse. He was advertised in the journal and uh, uh, Jerry Wells had something to do with him. He had, I believe he had him on his place, maybe even owned him for a while. He was one of those race stallions that Jerry liked and saw potential in him. And uh, like I say, Double L. Straw made a name for himself in the quarter horse breed, and his grandson, Double L's Dickens, made a name for himself in POAs. I got to see uh, this stallion in person in about probably 86 at the Bruners in Fall Creek, and uh, he was a beautiful stallion. Like I say, they said he was 14-3. If you would have measured him POA-wise, he probably would have been a little shorter than that, but he wasn't a real, real short, you know, stubby horse he looked like just a a small corridor stay and just a beautiful mover and a a very pretty head and a very pretty neck Uh, you gotta remember you know this picture was probably taken in the 70s so they used to take those manes down quite a bit for the for the path there the bridal path so not like they do nowadays so this horse ushered in a whole new bloodline into the POAs which became the straw POAs now he didn't have a lot of sons that want to understand uh, at in programs but he did have some daughters that became great producers and he just had a lot of offspring that became uh, international champions national show champions at one point in time he was the leading or uh, aqha stallion uh, sire of poa national champions uh, he has been passed now since you know he hasn't been in a program for a long time and that's counting you know one horse could have won 20, 30 classes like Black Swan S, her sire, Krogue Star, was the leader for a long time. And now I believe it's Country Kusa, uh, Morris's stallion. Dave Morris is a quarter horse stallion. I believe he's the leading quarter horse sire of POA champions now. But Double L's Dickens held that title for a long time. Here's another picture of him here. He was a flashy guy. And uh, this is Jan. He had some flashy babies. Now keep in mind, when they were using him, the height limit was 54 inches, and it would be for a long time. His first foals were born in 1979, 1978. 1978 was his first foals. I believe he had three foals that year. Two of them became very famous POAs, and we're going to discuss them in a minute. Uh, but you had to breed a really small mare to a 14 three-hand quarter horse if that was going to be your main stay, and that was the Bruner's main senior sire they had about they usually kept four mares i'd say three or four mares and one mare in particular ended up having about 13 foals by this day and and we'll talk about her here in a minute and probably five or six of them or seven of them everyone's going to know who they are when we start talking about them 
Uh, but the two foals that really put Double L's Dickens on the map was JBJ's Made of Straw and Cinnamon Straw. And these are unique photos here. These are little baby pictures. I mean, this isn't Futurity pictures or National Show. This might have been at the Wisconsin Futurity. I'm not sure if Jackie's watching tonight. She's probably can say hopefully she's watching i see tracy's on uh if you come on live and uh, make comments please go to the ecam uh, and uh, register with that so i can see who you are otherwise it just says facebook user quite a few people have done it and then i i can see uh yep tracy got on with ecam so i can see every time tracy comments which she comments a lot because she's a fellow historian and i lean on her a lot for when i uh, have brain farts but uh you know, it just makes it more fun if I can see who's commenting back, especially tonight, because there's probably going to be some riders, and I may mention the wrong sibling or the wrong horse. Uh, some of Double L's Dickens' foals looked a lot alike. They were leopards. Of course, a lot of them were full siblings. Uh, but anyway, uh, it's easy, but it takes about a minute. A minute, and Tracy said. So it takes a few minutes. Maybe for next time, if somebody wants to go and do it for next week, uh, you can. But anyway... The filly on the left, that's JBJ's Made of Straw, and that's a young Jackie Guthrie. She was Jackie Blazer back then. I don't want to say her age. I don't even know her age in that photo, but she, let's say she was very young, and uh, that's a cool photo. She's crouched down showing that filly. Uh, that Wisconsin Futurity, okay, I had it right. Wisconsin Futurity, Jackie just said, and I can see that's her. So, uh, JBJ's made a straw won quite a bit as a young filly. Uh, she won the International Futurity, which was replaced by the Select Sire Futurity, so it was the most prestigious Futurity at the time. Of course, the Wisconsin Futurity was the very first Futurity ever created in a POA club. And then uh, she went on to win, I believe, the International Show as a yearling, and then she won the International uh, Futurity as well as a yearling. And here she is winning the International Futurity with Jackie Schoner as a young baby and then here she is at the international show and then here she is at the sale now this is a historical picture here she was I believe the high selling yearling filly she was purchased by the Gayweiler family and that's Julie Gayweiler standing next to uh, Jackie of course uh, her mom Eula was on the board of directors for decades and uh, from Decatur, Illinois, helped a lot of kids and POAs, a lot of families, and they purchased this mare and uh, as a young, as a filly, and uh, Julie rode her for quite a while, and then uh, she went on to Kelly King, and I believe Kelly King from Colorado, uh, another director for a long time's daughter, Jerry King, was a president of the club for many, many years and a board of directors several different times, uh, and she, Kelly, rode this mare and supremed her, and uh, she won the 1986, the second versatility championship ever at the international show was won by JBJ's Made of Straw and Kelly King. And then, of course, she went on, you know, to, she went to California, and Susie Johnson rode her and uh, did a lot of great things in California. This mare was probably a supreme champion many times over if you added up her points, especially her performance points. Uh, and I don't have a lot of pictures of her as an adult. You know, there's only so many you can get on here and only so many hours in a day. But there she is out in California. Of course, that's a Pam photo. Pam's a great photographer, especially from the West Coast and the Pacific Northwest. And that's a young Susie Johnson on JBJ's Made of Straw. Later, we're going to see a grandson of Made of Straw that brings it back full circle to Jackie uh, Guthrie. And... Uh, that's my lucky zipper. His pictures will be in here. She had one full, I believe, this mare, and that was Lucky Straw. Please correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Jackie. But uh, Jackie said she was an early June full, so yeah, she looked pretty young at the Wisconsin Futurity. That probably would have been in September. And uh, so anyway, this is JBJ's Made of Straw, and that was one of the first offspring of Double L's Dickens. So you could see he got a, a big jump, and Jackie Guthrie became a, a good supporter and a great fan of Double L's Dickens and kept a lot of his stuff in her program throughout the years, even till late. And uh, so now we're going to move on to the second famous foal of Double L's Dickens, another 78. And this is the one that was the baby in the ad next to her. 
uh, and this is cinnamon straw. Now, this was a picture courtesy of the Bruners. Uh, Jan sent me quite a few photos years ago for the Legends book. Uh, Double L's Dickens was the only quarter horse in spots included, the book I wrote about uh, famous uh, sires that helped the POAs, and of course he was one of them. So this is Cinnamon Straw. He probably was a young yearling here, and uh, he was purchased by the Koroleski family. Koroleski's had quite a few of the Bruner's uh, POA foals and Double L Dickens foals over the years, and this was the first one. Jeff Koroleski supremed him at a very young age. It might have been the record. It was four years old. He became a supreme champion. Uh, he won the Elroy Latch Memorial that we've talked about. That's the equestrian memorial at the Midwest Regional Show. And he won that twice with Cinnamon Straw. And, of course, he was a junior pony when he won it. And then Cinnamon Straw went to Indiana. He was shown by the Rouseys, owned by the Rouseys. And uh, I believe this is Tracy Rousey. I hope I got that right. And I know he was there for a while. They did pretty well in competition. And then I know a Brian Studer rode him and won quite a few classes at the 89 International. Brian and Cinnamon Straw won, I believe, five game classes. And I really do believe, you know, it's kind of ironic, a boy named John won the first versatility with Darlin' Jill, John Katzenberger. But that was in 1985. I think if it would have went before that, uh, Jeff Koroleski, also from Wisconsin, with Cinnamon Straw, would have had a good chance because he was young, he was in good shape, Cinnamon Straw was. He jumped him. I know Rousey's didn't jump him very well, they said. She told me that on, on Facebook or somewhere. But I know Jeff did jump him as a young age, and uh, I think he would have did very well in the versatility competition. So here's some more pictures of Cinnamon Straw. Again, he was with quite a few families made a big name for himself, especially at an early age. Now, he became the highest-selling gilding ever at the international sale when Koroleski sold him, and that was in 1982. 1982 was a big year for POAs for prices. Prices started increasing. They would dip a few years later when the whole, you know, the oil field and the whole market dropped out of horses, about 84, 85. Quarter horses took a big hit as well. Uh, but in 82, POAs were flying high, pokey plotted. It sold for 8000 in 1982 and was the highest selling POA ever. And then at the same sale, Cinnamon Straw sold for 6000 and being and became the highest selling gilding of all time up to that point. Of course, those records have been smashed now as, you know, prices just the, and inflation and everything else. Okay, so now we're back to Jackie here. Like I say, Jackie was a big fan of JB, of uh, Double L's Dickens. And this is JBJ's Strawberry. Now, he was out of Tika's Miss Silhouette, who was the mother of uh, Doc's Tough Tiger and JBJ's Totally Tough, both bred by Doc Nemers and both Double Tough sons. They both became stallions. This guy became a famous gilding. He was a gilding his whole show career. Uh, he won quite a bit. You know, Jackie always presents a nice uh, halter horse. I always picked on her when I was traveling with her a little bit. Jackie kind of took me under her wing when I was a late teenager and in my 20s, and I'd go to some shows with her. She had some bellies on some of her babies and some of her yearlings, like you see Strawberry here, but it was still good enough to win the national show because she just had good confirmation horses like she still does. And uh, so this was another uh, Double L's Dickens gilding son. As, as Cinnamon Straw was getting really famous, this gilding was starting to make a name for himself and halter. Here he is the next year, Jackie won. This probably would have been a three-year-old gilding. She can correct me if I'm wrong. This would have been at the 84 International Show. There's a colored photo of it. JBJ Strawberry. And there's Jackie. I don't know if a lot of people know Jackie drove POAs, and this we all recognize that if you've been in POAs a minute. You know, of course, it's not there any longer, but Des Moines, I grew up walking those fairgrounds, and that's in Des Moines, Iowa, and that would be the International Futurity, and it looks like she has a plaque in her hand. It could have also been the 84 International, because this picture here is from Des Moines, and the 84 International was in Des Moines. Of course, 90 and 91, it was in Des Moines, too. So, iconic picture, Tracy's saying, yep, that's a cool picture there, Jackie. 
uh, with JBJ strawberry, one of her homebred. Now this would have been after uh, JBJ's Jigger Joe and JBJ's Made of Straw. This was one of her real early uh, great champions was JBJ's uh, strawberry. Here's Jackie's daughter, Nicole, riding him under saddle. She did the training on him and rode him. Here she is again. And then they sold him in 1986. And, yep, Jackie just put it. And I was just getting it to it. She beat me. But the prices had dropped off a lot. I believe he sold for thirty-five or 3600 in 1986, but he topped the sale. He was the high-selling POA. So that means in a period of four years, with not many foals on the ground, Double L Dickens had the high-selling gilding at the 82 sale and a record breaker and then in 86 he had his son was the high selling POA and Bruners just started pumping out a lot of good babies they uh, one mare in particular that they bred every year to double L's Dickens was Rod Vandy's baby doll and Rod Vandy's baby doll according to my records had 13 foals by double L's Dickens at least five of them became international champions. So, yeah, and Strawberry, we better wrap that up a little bit. Jackie said, and I remember this story, too. She said he ended up being owned by Tanya Tucker. So people, most uh, country people, I don't want to say country and western. That sounds like my dad. But uh, most country people know Tanya Tucker was a teenager, you know, entertainer and became a famous, famous uh, western singer, country singer. And uh she had JBJ strawberry, so that's cool. I believe she kept him on her farm down in Tennessee. So this gilding here, this is Buster Straw, and he was the 1981 foal by Rod Vandy's baby doll. I believe he was her first registered foal. So this was pretty early. That's Leonard Lewis showing him. He was bred by the Bruners, and he was purchased by the Rupplinger family from Minnesota. Lee Rupplinger, her two daughters, uh, Becky and Amy, showed and uh, Becky showed Buster Straw, I believe. And, you know, I looked up some pedigrees getting ready for this. And, of course, back then the records weren't on the Internet. As there wasn't an Internet. So not all Double L's Dickens foals are on all breed pedigree. But it's funny, Buster the Wonder Pony is on all breed pedigree as a 1982 gilding. And he's by Double L's Dickens. And it's him, who he's actually 81, Buster Straw, but somebody put him on there as Buster the Wonder Pony. So here's uh, the aforementioned Becky Rupplinger from uh, Minnesota with Buster Straw. He was a handsome-looking gilding. You know, he looked like a lot of them that uh, the, the Bruners ended up producing. Those nice leopards had some roan varnish marks on him. Here's a picture. I believe they told me this was in Colorado. I might be wrong, but I can't remember people email me text me instant message me and sometimes I, I lose track of everything but I try to get all the pictures but sometimes I don't get all the content uh, but that's Becky and there he is on the rail and I remember Buster Straw and Becky at the 86 uh, Minnesota State uh, Horse Expo and uh, the POA Minnesota POA Club always did a good job promoting POAs there and I had to take his bridle off, or I put the halter on, I think, and Becky took the bridle off, something like that. And Susie Schultz was helping us because her mom was a big part of that. And Becky's mom, Lee, was always a big promoter and part of that uh, horse expo. And we got a lot of people involved in POAs uh, because of that expo. People would bring their ponies there and show them off, and they brought Buster Straw there for at least one year. Okay, so the full brother to Buster Straw in 1983 is the famous Hall of Notes, and this is him right here. And I'm gonna let this picture sink in a little bit. He's a young baby here, a beautiful baby. Of course, he ended up Ronan out, and he's a famous gilding, lived a long time with a lot of families. But I don't have a picture of Buster Straw and Hall of Notes, full sister that's in between them, and she was one of my favorites. Uh, the Koraleskis owned her. She was a very beautiful mare. I always liked the way she moved, and that was Jolene Straw. And Jolene Straw, at a young age, had a Docs Built Tough colt named KK's Tough Teddy. And I don't have a picture of him on here tonight either, but KK's Tough Teddy won the international show small gilding class five years in a row. 
I know I think he was at Tom's barn, Tom Walmsley in Decatur, uh, but he was hard to get around. He won. The, he was a small gilding, and he was by Bill Tuff, and, uh, of course, uh, out of Jolene Straw, who was the second full in the Rod Vandy's baby doll, uh, Double L's Dickens Cross. But this is the fir- third full, the handsome Hall & Oates. And my dad and I always argued about this. I said he was named after the band, and Dad didn't know who Hall & Oates was, Daryl Hall or John Oates. And he said they were probably Hall & Oates when the mayor <laughs> started full, and they were probably Hall & Feed, and that's why they named him that. I never asked Jan, but knowing Jan and Fred Bruner, I would say he was named after uh, the singing duo. So here he is as a uh, early yearling. Looks like they body clipped him or something, probably getting him ready uh, to sell. The Smith family from Wisconsin purchased him, and Samantha Smith showed him. They showed him a ton as a yearling. Uh, one of the episodes, probably uh, maybe next year, late this year, will be about all the the 1982 uh, and 83 uh, 83 yearlings from Wisconsin that showed. There was like four or five of them that were in the high point running. And then Avatar's Mucho from Iowa, and he sold to Missouri. He actually won the high point. But there was a whole bunch of yearlings that year. The Baron, uh, oh, Bitto Tough Cash, and Hall and Oates, they all were shown in the same state and uh, all great POAs. And they're all the same age, all around the same area even. So, so this is a young Carrie Kane, and a lot of people remember Carrie. Uh, she actually showed a different uh, Double L's Dickens son, but here she stepped in for Samantha. I think he was three here, Hall and Oates. I'd never seen this picture that I know of unless it was in the magazine, but I know I'd never seen it in color, so I want to thank Carrie for sending this uh, to me. You can see he's starting to roan out a little bit there, and uh, he was just a, a handsome POA. And, of course, Carrie will be talking about her in a minute. She made history with a, a Double L's Dickens POA. So here's, here he is. Of course, the Morris Hampton family had uh, Hall & Oates for a long time, and he was with a lot of families. I know Becky Belcher won English Pleasure with him in 1995, and, uh, you know, he just accomplished a lot in his life. I believe he's in the Hall of Fame. If he's not, he should be, but I think he is. So here he is again, you know, uh, Susie's two sons, rode him and then of course they had a lot of great older POAs they had the 2D's POAs but then they also had uh, Stormy Bridges Jr. and of course Hall and Oates so you could always count on seeing some great older POAs when you went to the Morrises I'm going to put the POA history banner on this picture here because that's some good modern history 2001 both these kids are young men now growing up so so we move on to another one. I believe this is prime time. He roaned out too. Uh, prime time would have been the 1984 uh, offspring. And when I say roaned out, I don't mean that in a bad way. I mean, they had a breed color producing mares to Double L's Dickens and a Rod Vandy's baby doll had to be homozygous, Tracy. I'm sure she was. I don't remember. I seen her in person, but I was a kid. I can't remember what she looked like. Jackie might describe her for us. Uh, but. This was the 1984 edition of that cross. And, of course, Carrie Kane ended up showing prime time. We just had a picture of Carrie. And here he is at the 82 Midwest Regional. Carrie was, is a Wisconsin girl. And she won the versatility with prime time. And I believe she was fairly young when she won it with him. She was in the 13th or 18. But uh, he became the second double L's Dickens full to win the versatility competition. You had JBJ's Made of Straw in 86, and then Primetime and Carrie won it. Okay, here's just a few of Bruner's uh, POAs. Some of these weren't as famous, but they're Double L Dickens sons. So this is Jack Straw. He was one of them. I believe this is Straw Zan. I know they had Zantana, but I think this is Straw Zan. And this is Fred Bruner. And that's a beautiful looking colt. That was probably the Wisconsin Futurity, I believe. Uh, Sharon Fellens was a famous photographer. Like Pam out in the uh, Northwest, Sharon took a lot of pictures in the Midwest. And a lot of the photos I've shown over the last couple months were taken by her, late 70s, early 80s. If you were somebody in POAs, she took your picture. So 
And this is Fred Bruner showing one of his Double L Dickens Colts. Here's Straw Mickey. Straw Mickey ended up uh, winning an international class, I believe, with uh, Vicky Klinger. I think they won more than one class. Uh, he was by Lannon's SS Bambi. So he was a leopard son of Double L's Dickens. Again, went on to be a pretty famous gilding. Uh, I believe this is uh, Worth a Fortune was his name. I don't know what happened to Worth a Fortune, but this is a, a Bruner picture here as a young baby. Here he is, kind of a three-quarter view of him, classy looking colt. Okay, so this is one of the later ones. We're going to go back and talk about a few, uh, but this is uh, Straw Raspberry, and he was a full brother to all the and uh, to the, all the crude crosses from the baby doll and Double L Dickens. Uh, and Carrie, I always mess up your last name, but I think well, Winky from Wisconsin, she, uh, she's an equestrian still, a horsewoman, and she grew up in uh, Wisconsin. And she told the story, I haven't mentioned this name yet, but the Carlsons, and Carol Carlson ended up buying quite a few of the straw ponies. And uh, she told Carrie to go get this one before she goes and, and gets him because uh, he was a pretty colored POA. Now, he did roan out also, but... Uh, he was shown quite a bit. There he is with Carrie in 2000 at the Futurity. And there he is again. So some of the ones I didn't mention yet is uh, Ebony Straw was the 85 uh, POA out of that cross. And this isn't him here. but uh, And then Straw Terminator. Now Ebony Straw uh, won... The English Pleasure, 9 through 12 girls with Carrie Carlson. And then Megan Quigley won some stuff with him, too, national classes. So, okay, we got a, an update here. Jackie Guthrie says, Rod Vandy's baby doll was a 48-inch few-spot mare. She wasn't anything special, but she nicked with Dickens. It was a magic cross. That's right. I remember seeing her, and she wasn't anything you'd load up in the trailer. But her baby sold for a lot of money, and she helped put... Dickens on the map. There again, he needed a fuse spot, and he needed a 48-inch mare, because he was well over 14 hands when the limit was only 54. So, uh, you know, she did the did the cross. There was a lot of Rod Vandys. Jackie probably can tell us a little story of the Rod Vandy fan. I think it was two names put together, like a lot of them, to create the prefix. Uh, but, you know, Betsy Ross was one of them, and uh, there was quite a few Rod Vandys. I know uh, the Carlisle's family had a Rod Vandy's mare. And uh, anyway, Baby Doll did a great job crossing with Double L's Dickens. So Ebony Straw, as I say, he won English Pleasure again. Uh, the Double L's Dickens became really good in English. It might have been because of the, some of the thoroughbred breeding in there because uh, Double L Straw was, uh, had a lot of thoroughbred in him. And, uh, but they just, as the record shows, they won a lot of pleasure classes and a lot of English pleasure classes. So Straw Terminator was one that slipped away from the Wisconsin group. He went to Iowa and Ray Peets purchased him, I believe, at a Midwest sale. He was a leopard and he used him for a stallion just like he does. We talked about Ray on episode nine, used him one season. And then the Carlsons drove to Spencer, Iowa and brought him back to Menominee area over there to Wisconsin and uh, Eau Claire, I should say. And uh, he became a Mount Kelly Carlson won stuff on Straw Terminator. So he spent a year or so as a stallion. He ended up signing Driftwood's Tango Bars. I know Jackie Guthrie went to Spencer and got him. And I believe he was in uh, Hank Frieder's barn for a while. She was Tango Bar. She was a nice-looking filly. She was actually a daughter of Straw Terminator. But he became a famous POA. So I believe this is Maximum Overdrive. I'm pretty sure this is Maximum Overdrive and Courtney Craver holding him at an international show in Gordyville. Beautiful headed POA, again crossing the well-bred quarter horse to a little bitty pony mare. And this is her again. And they won quite a bit of stuff together too. Again, they won English Pleasure 13 through 18 girls. And if you've ever been to a Congress or an international show, especially in the 80s, in the 90s, 
one of the toughest classes to win is English Pleasure 13 through 18 girls. It's a huge class. Uh, there's been almost 100 entries before in that class. And Senior Pleasure would, was the one that would have close to 100. But the English Pleasure girls 13 through 18 is just a tough class. Even placing in the top 10 is an honor. So he had quite a few POAs win the 9 through 12 and the 13 through 18 English Pleasure. Double L's Dickens did. And this is a picture. Thanks again for to Courtney sending this. She said he's still alive and well. I believe he's 33 now, 33 or 32. Well, let's see, he's an 88, so he'd be 33. So he was one of the last real famous ones of the cross. There was several after that, but you had Buster Straw, Jolene Straw, Holland Oates, Prime Time, Ebony Straw, Straw Terminator, and Maximum Overdrive. That's 1981. To 1988 with only 86 missing so talk about a program right there that's just one cross talk about a magic cross golden cross uh, that was meant to be for sure so here's a colt I believe he was an 81 this is straw boss and the Bruners kept him as a junior stallion and he ended up producing a pretty famous POA but they promoted him quite a bit. The Bruners had the back cover of the magazine for years. They, they must have had a contract with it. They, Double L's Dickens picture was on the back cover. Or they would put pictures of their offspring. And uh, Strawboss, they really liked him. He was one of their early uh, good ones. And this is him as a little bitty baby again. You can see his fresh body clip. See those spots jumping off his white hair and pink skin there. And uh, again, he was out of a little mare. And, uh, and Double L's Dickens. Jackie wrote, all the foals were very athletic and very smart. They were so easy to train. Baby Doll had 12 colts and one filly. Jolene Straw, wow. I didn't even think of that, but yeah, in my notes, Jolene Straw is the only filly. So, and I love Jolene Straw, like I say. She was her 82. So all those colts, and I had 13 foals down, so that was right. So that's good. Uh, now, Getting back to Straw Boss, his 1985 filly, they bred him to a half-sister named Strawberry Blonde, Double L Dickens' daughter. That was a really nice mare. My family ended up buying her. And uh, the filly, the cross that produced was nearly doubled. And uh, kind of a play there on the because it was half-brother to half-sister. She was a tremendous-looking mare. She went on to win some stuff at the national shows. Uh, I just, my dad and I fell in love with Nearly Doubled. We loved her so much. We almost bought her as a yearling, uh, but we had so many at home, we just didn't. We couldn't buy another one. But then years later, to breed to Kiddo Tough, my dad did purchase her mother, who was solid, and that was uh, Strawberry Blonde. Now, and we also purchased a horse named Straw Jamie from Jackie Guthrie, and uh, that's not her here, but we'll get to her here. Let's see, I guess I don't have her in the pictures, but I thought I had a picture of her. So this is one of Jackie's last Double L Dickens mares. I believe it is her last mare. This was, I think, JBJ's Extra Fancy was her name. And uh, she was by uh, Out of Driftwood's Fancy Dance and then Double L's Dickens. And she had that flax and mane and tail. But uh, like I say, Jackie was always a huge supporter and fan of Dickens and uh, this was a mare she kept up to recently I believe so and she raised quite a few foals out of it here's one with Nicole Jackie can help us on who these are but here's another one I believe these are her offspring so now yes extra fancy Jackie said so the Bruners they did pretty you know that little Rod Vandy mare Baby doll, she was a few spot, and she had some colored ones. But being a quarter horse, they did get some solids. And um, there was, I remember going to the Midwest sale, and they'd have these beautiful fillies. And my dad always said, we're going to get one of those one of these days. There was Straw Annie, I forget. the A guy in Ch St. Charles, Minnesota would buy them, and I don't even think he was in POAs. He might have drove them, but he would buy up these solid, beautiful, breedy, Really nice-headed Double L Dickens daughters, these solid POAs. Some were bay, some weren't, and uh, we always wanted to go track him down and see if we could get him. But my dad ended up buying two daughters. Uh, unfortunately, Straw Jamie 
uh, broke her leg on her place. Somebody asked us to sell a mare for him, and we brought her on our place, and, and she kicked straw Jamie, and, and we kept her long enough to produce her Jackie Blazer Bread Colt filly, which we named Total Treat, and uh, Total Treat went on to be a good brood mare. She showed pri- quite well in Halter as a yearling, but she became the mother of JBJ's Double Trouble, who was a reserve grand champion gilding at the national show, and then she became the mother of definitely a dreamsicle, and I know people will know that few spot. So them are straw bred uh, relatives, those two. So uh, Jackie also kept a solid stud for a while, and I had his photo queued up, but it d- didn't make the cut accidentally. I'm, it was supposed to, but his name was JBJ Sizzling Straw, and he was a beautiful modern-looking POA. And I always thought if we could uh, cross kiddo tough onto the double l dickens we would have really come up with a nick a pleasure horse nick and poas with beautiful heads and we tried to do that but things just didn't work out for us that way but i always thought that would have been a, a great cross so here again is one of them that started it all this is jbj's made of straw jackie guthrie bread poa 1978 it's nice to see a famous weanling that goes on to have a great career and she had a great show career with many girls um, all over the country. So Illinois, Colorado, California. And here's her grandbaby. This would be my lucky zipper. And that's Jackie smiling there. That's when they purchased him. Again, that's coming full circle because Jackie bred his, uh, his grandma. So, and this is, this would have been, uh, he was by Lucky Straw and then out of a, quarter horse mare uh, I believe a Zippo Pine Bar daughter or something like that he's a well-bred dude of course uh, my lucky zippers had some success as a sire I believe he's still at the pony farm uh, and that's him as a baby of course there's pony farm connections there and Jackie and her husband Larry this would have been at the 05 sale there is as a yearling at the Futurity that picture's a little skewed when they probably took it a screenshot of it or something it's a little skewed but you can tell he's a well-bred POA and of course that's Pat and uh, Barb Hood Pat Burton's leading him and there's the same two again showing him as a two-year-old he won the futurity that year and he's just a breedy looking animal very 3d animal my lucky zipper a lot of a lot of breeding I just bought a 2021 My Lucky Zipper Daughter, Jackie said. So there you go. When it's in your blood, you like it, you pick it out. A lot of times, I know Jackie's one of those, she can walk in a pasture and pick something out and it'll be related to something that she liked and she didn't. She might not have known it. But she's got that kind of eye and a great POA breeders are that way. Here's Ada Straw Girl. I just threw this in because I had the picture. Not a very good picture of her, I believe. She, uh, I think Carolyn Dreyer had something to do with her. I know Jan Rogers talked to me about her. Uh, I believe she was a full sister to, uh, oh, I'm drawing a blank. But she was out of Tiki Strawberry, I believe, JBJ Strawberry. Jackie will correct me if I'm wrong, but Ada Straw Girl, she was around. She sold quite a few POA sales. Here's one of the solid daughters I was talking about. I believe this is Straw Annie. But you just look in the for a little bitty mother, look at the clean limbs, the clean legs, and the nice head. You know, she had a nice neck, nice chest, but she was solid. But uh, a lot of these did go on to make good brood mares. Here's Straw Jamie that I talked about earlier, and Jackie had this mare. She had uh, JBJ's Teetoler was one of her foals, and then JBJ's Tolly Macho is pictured here. And then Total Treat was bred by Jackie, like I mentioned, but we fold her out. And uh, anyway, JBJ's Tolly Macho went on to have his own family of POAs and be a pretty good stallion up in Michigan, a good performance POA. She was a bay, uh, Straw Jamie was. I believe she was Straw Boss's full sister. Yep, Jackie said Straw Girl was out of Tika, so that means she's a full sister to Strawberry. Now, this isn't a very good picture of the mare, but this is Strawberry Blonde, and uh, or Strawberry Blondie, however you want to say it. But this was a Bruner bred mare that we ended up purchasing. But 
They bred her to our stallion and East Acres Chippa Tough in 1986, the year Kiddo Tough was born. And the next year, she had perfection. And that's this colt right here. He's probably 10 days old in this picture. Not very old, but he won the Select Sire for Charity in 1987. That's the year it was senior and junior. Uh, KK's Mad Max won the senior from Wisconsin. And perfection, bred by the Bruners, won the, the juniors. Yeah, Polly Hammer rode JBJ's Totally Macho. So like I said, tonight's going to be a quick show. Now, I want to explain something a little bit. Here's Double L Dickens again, beautiful headshot. But, you know, some of these big subjects like KS's last week and Double Tough and Gold Prince, uh, this podcast is not meant to be an anthology. You know what I mean? It's not going to be all-inclusive and cover every single thing. And I haven't had any complaints or anything. Everybody's been really great, really... Uh, a lot of great comments about this uh, but it's more of a overview maybe an extreme overview like next week's gonna be salty POAs and there's no way I can talk about the salty POAs in two hours and we can't talk about it in two or three episodes if we wanted to break it down and get really in depth about everything that Lynn Puffenbarger did from 1960 till just a couple years ago and all the stallions and mares he used and all the crosses he did and all the kids that wrote them i mean that'd be a book you know that'd be a mini series so it's these podcasts are meant to honor people like tonight I honored double l's dickens and the bruners and uh, jackie guthrie the carlson's everybody that uh, believed in the coraleskis people that promoted double l dickens stuff uh but it's it's an overview of it so you know sometimes things are going to get missed and i'm not going to be able to have time to mention every single uh family or every single uh poa so but i do apologize i try uh but it's you know some of that would get a little tedious for the viewers too so i wanted to do a little quicker episode tonight uh next week i'm hoping to have a live special guest and then another guest on the phone Hopefully everything works out logistics-wise. And uh, I'm happy for all the comments. we got a nice comment on there right now. If anybody ever has any questions about pedigrees or history or anything, you can look me up on Facebook. Of course, these live. this is live right now. I'm going to put in my horse winnie here. Let's see. <laughs> so my boss put that in for me a couple months ago, and I don't hardly ever use it. So uh, anyway... I'm glad everybody had fun tonight watching this. It was a quick episode. Next week's going to be a long, probably a two-hour episode about Lynn Puffenbarger and the Salties. So start sending me your pictures if you rode Britches POAs or Salties, Salty Gotta Look stuff, current modern stuff, and uh, anything to do with Salty, uh, please send it my way, and I appreciate your stories as well. So again, uh, Thanks for watching my POA podcast, Black Hand and Beyond. This was episode 13, the Straw POAs. See you next Tuesday for the Salty POAs.